Okay, here is preparing for section 4.1. This is the review content, and then we're going to answer the following questions. In this case here, we want to find the population mean or sample mean as indicated. So you would have to go back in chapter 3 to do this, or <clears throat> we're looking for the sample mean. So if it's asking us for the sample mean, then we need to figure out which one of these uh, symbols are we going to use. Well, remember that X bar represents the sample mean, and the population mean is mu. So in order to find the mean, we're going to go ahead and open this up in StatCrunch. And here's our data. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to go to Stat, Summary Stat. We'll go to Columns. We're going to select Variable 1, and then we want the mean, and it's the sample mean, and we're going to compute that. So if you look at the number here, we get the value of 10. So we're going to select the first one, X bar, because that represents the sample mean. And make sure you know the differences between those two. And check our answer, and there is our result. <clears throat> okay, now let's go to the next question. <coughs> <clears throat> the next question says, find the sample variance and standard deviation of this data. So I'm going to close out um, of here. I'm going to go ahead and we want to find the sample variance. So which one represents the sample variance? Well, this symbol here, the first one represents the population variance. The second one represents the sample variance. So make sure, again, that you understand the differences between those two. So we're going to select that one, and now we're going to open this data up in StatCrunch. Okay, now that we open up this data in StatCrunch, we're going to go to Stat, select Summary Stats, and then go to Columns. We're going to select the column that we're looking at, and then we're going to look for the variance. So now the variance is highlighted. We're going to go select Compute, and then we can see what the number is here. Okay, 182.48889. Now it's asking us to round it to two decimal places. So that means we have to round it to two decimal places. So we're going to get 182.49. So therefore, we get 182.49. Okay, so next it says, we're not ready to leave this question. So now it says, choose the correct answer and fill in to find the sample standard deviation. So let's go back and go to our options. Let's select edit. Okay, and let's go ahead and select standard deviation. So we're going to compute that. Now there is our standard deviation. And we're going to round it to one decimal place, which is 13.5. And again, since it's the sample, we're using the sample symbol, which is S. And so therefore, that's going to be 13.5. Check our answer, and there is our result. Okay, next, we have another review assessment. It says, suppose babies born after a gestation period of 32 to 35 weeks have a mean height of 2,800 grams and a standard deviation of 600 grams, while babies born after gestation period of 40 weeks have a mean weight of 3,200 grams and a standard deviation of 430 grams. Now, if a 32-week gestation period baby weighs 2,425 grams and a 41-week gestation period baby weighs 2,825 grams, find the corresponding z-scores, and then we want to figure out which baby weighs less relative to the gestation period. Okay, so we want to find the corresponding z-scores, okay, and then round this to two decimal places. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to bring this question into our page here, okay? So here's what we want to do, okay? We want to be able to find the corresponding z-scores. So the first thing we need to check is the following, okay? We know that there's baby born, babies born after a gestation period between 32 and 35 weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that in green. So we're going to say that the 32 to 35 weeks has a mean weight of 280 or 2,800 grams, and a standard deviation of 600 grams, okay? And then, while the babies were born after the gestation, gestation period of 40 weeks, okay, so after the gestation, gestation period of 40 weeks, have a mean weight of 3,200 grams, and a standard deviation of 430 grams, okay? 
So what we're going to do now is we want to be able to find the z-scores. Okay, so it says if a 32-week gestation period baby weighs 2,425 grams, okay, so what that means is we want to find the z-score of the baby that's in the 32-week, okay? Now recall that the formula for the z-score is taking the data value x minus the mean, so we'll call this the population mean over the population standard deviation, okay? So now we need to figure out, okay, what is the information that's given? Well, for the 32 to 35 weeks, we know that the mean is 2,800 grams. So we know that the mean is 2,800 grams. We also know that the standard deviation is 600 grams. And we want to figure out in the 32 week gestation period baby that weighs 2,425. So that means that X is going to equal 2,425 grams. So now in step three, for the Z score of the 32 week baby, we're going to fill in that information. So we know that X represents 2,425. We're going to subtract the mean of 2,800. And then we're going to divide that by 600. Okay, so let's see what the z-score is. And then again, it says that we need to round that to two decimal places. So let's plug this into our calculator. So plugging this into our calculator, we have 2425 minus 2800. And then we're going to divide that by 600. And that's going to give us the two decimal places, negative 0.63. Okay, next, what we want to do is now we want to find a 41-week gestation period of a baby that weighs 2,825 grams. Okay, so again, here we want to find the z-score for the 41-week gestation period. And again, using the same formula, x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Now, let's write down what is given. So we can see here that anybody or any babies that are born after the period of 40 weeks has a mean of 3,200 grams. So the mean is 3,200 grams. Okay, and then the standard deviation is going to be 430 grams. Okay, and then what is the value of X for the 41 week period? And that means X is going to equal 2,000 825. And now just like we did in the previous step, we're going to go ahead and find the z-score. And so the value of x is 2825 minus 3200. And then we're going to divide that by 430. So therefore, what is the z-score for that 41? Well, let's go ahead and do that. So we have 2825 minus 3200 and then we're going to divide that by 430 which gives us to two decimal places negative 0 0.87 so negative 0 0.87 so looking at these two z scores remember that you're talking about a negative value here for z scores okay so when you think of the number line Right? When you think of the number line, you want to compare these numbers, right? So if here is your z-score, right? So the z-score for 41 is going to be here at... So the z-score of 41 is at negative 0.87, okay? And then the z-score for 32 is going to be to the right of that. So that means it's going to be negative 0.63, correct? And again, that is to the left of 0. So that means that this z-score 32 is going to be larger than this score because of the negative value. So I'm going to put my answer in, and we're going to say that the baby born in week 41 weighs relatively less, 
since its z-score is negative 0.87, is smaller than the z-score of negative 0.63 for the baby born in week 32.